What's going on, y'all? What's really good? My name's Ryan. I'm Victor. Welcome to Home Farms. Today, I've got my brother checking out the brand new release from Mark Morton, featuring the late Chester Bennington, Cross Off. Cross Off Today. So black I hope I said fucking Morton. <laughs> anyway, Mark Morton. yeah, Mark Morton. So he is the guitarist, or one of the guitarists for Lamb of God. And oh, he, yeah. So you listen to one of their tracks. Yeah. Uh, Walk with me in hell was the one we did. Yeah. Uh, and then Chester Bennington. Does he, do you recognize his name? He's the lead singer for, or was the lead singer for Lincoln Park. So this is the last oh, track that he recorded. Wow. As yeah, far as we know. Yeah, no. So they finally Damn. released it. Damn. So yeah, they did a collaboration. Mark Morton's coming out with his own uh, album, and he did uh, Chester Bennington hopped on this track with him. Fuck oh, me, dude. So yeah, this one just came out, and so I wanted to get this one done so we can actually be current with something for a change. <laughs> so. <clears throat> you fucking me up right now, too. Chester. Yeah. Rest man. in peace, dude. Dude, for real, that's a... That's my childhood right there. Man. Right? Yeah, right. For real. <laughs> anyway, fuck it. In many ways, like, dude, I heard this motherfucker on the radio, on fucking, you heard this shit on fucking, you heard it in movies, you heard fucking, on fucking live fucking action shows and bullshit, and dude, dog, their, their music yeah, they were always. They were massive. Yeah, massive. When they were out. Like, I, they they fucking cross genre with hip hop. I think one of the biggest albums that I love listening to to this date by them is that Leakin Park and Jay Z album yeah. they put together. And it's just putting their shit together. That's all it was. It wasn't like we just came in and redid music. No, we kept the same music that Leakin Park has done, the same music that Jay Z's done, and we just we mashed it, mashed yeah. it like, and that was a. Fucking bomb ass album, dude. Like, yeah, it was pretty dope. Yeah, it was. It was amazing. Like, wow. Man. I'm anxious to hear this song now. Yeah. Anyway, mm. uh, this is your first time joining us, just a quick fucking FYI. Uh, we listen to the track all the way through. So if you want to get to the actual reaction and discussion part, uh, we've got the time in the description below so you can click it or you know, you know where you need to skip to get what you're looking for. Uh, with that being said, let's jump to it. Anyway, yeah, so, yeah, they've got a pretty fucking interesting mashup here, but uh, we'll talk about all that shit after we listen to this track. This is one of the last tracks that this, that, that this dude As far as I'm aware, it's possible this is the last track that he ever recorded. So, uh, there may be something that, you know, comes out later, but at least as far as, you know, has been let known now. Yeah. You know, at this moment, this is the last track he, he ever recorded, so. That's wild. Yeah. Anyway, with that being said, fucking grab your drink, put your headphones in, turn your sound systems up, you know what fucking drill is. Let's listen to this music. Yeah.
so black kind of fucking annoying uh, so you know why I pick these lyric videos I go by the one that you know looks the best and then uh, sounds the best mm -hmm. and uh, you know for the overall experience okay. as opposed to you know going through the whole way and trying to make sure they got the right lyrics this pisses me off because the main course or part of the course there pre-course and whatever mm -hmm. they've got wrong and the only video that's been released for this fucking thing was an official lyric video oh, shit. so how the fuck do you mess up the lyrics when all you have to go off is a fucking official lyric video whoever the fuck made this video it looks nice but come on dude all you had to do was watch the original and rewrite it i almost went with the original but i'm like ah it's it's a vimo it's it'd probably get blocked anyway so anyway i just want to get that off my chest real quick I didn't know. Well, yeah, you but wouldn't know. Be said, uh, but yeah, so the, uh, lyric, the, the, the biggest one that points out, because I don't know it word yeah, for word yet, but the yeah. most obvious error to me was it's that stare at the sun and hope it makes you blind, you know, or whatever that fucking line is. So, right. uh, yeah, so this motherfucker has to keep staring down the sun and note instead of and hope. Because and hope. Uh, it's kind of a big difference. And right. hope the light will finally blind your eyes. Okay. You know what I mean? So it was, wow. Yeah, so okay. staring at, yeah. yeah, basically trying to blind yourself, you know. So I kind of <laughs> massively, uh, depending on how closely you're looking at this stuff, massively I mean, shifts the, wow. the message of the track. Yeah, no, it does shift the message of the track. And there's probably people that tune into this stuff that are listening for the first time, you know. That's Hopefully. That you need to, yeah, no, that is. But that's stuff that you need to know. Um, yeah, so and, just wanted to get that out of the way real quick before we dove into this shit. And aside from giving that out the way, you know, honestly, no, I want to say this too. Um, please keep it on camera too. Uh, there are some stuff that we take off. Um, but with that being said, we are serious about what we do um, for you. Choosing to watch. Um, it's more than just money to us. Um, the content of music, music in general, is something that we both feed off of. So, for us, again, like I said, we we're genuine. Like it's not just about the money. Ain't no money made in it yet. Can't wait till there is. And if there is, you know, and and when that comes to be, thank you, the people that view us, the people that subscribe, the people that choose and watch. Um. But yeah, so I just want to get that and point that out because I noticed the difference, especially just because, you know, it's a key element to the message there. Right. And then, uh, you know, I don't catch them all. Uh, like some of the Tool videos, there's always, I mean, but the difference with Tool is, is they don't publish official lyrics most of the time. 
Um, so it's up to your interpretation. And so I've never seen anybody come across a lyric video and someone doesn't say that was wrong. Like so, uh, but yeah, th this one was a little more important because, like I said, just that one word change is kind of drastically shifts the message a little bit. You so. know what? Even then, it's just like you know. So usually I don't find it that that big a deal because you know we're listening to what they're saying more right. as much as we're reading it. So right, right. Um. First off, we're, it's, a, it's a very touchy topic of conversation for me, just because, you know, um, the individual in here, again, he's gone. We, you know, we've had quite a few. Yeah. Uh, the, last yeah article, the last couple the of The report we did done, last yeah, night was a yeah, fucking like, Alice in Chains. But, <laughs> but honestly, this um, in itself, aside from Alice in Chains, this is a talent that has lived off. This is a talent that has lived to not its peak, but its true potential. Um, and to live past your true potential, you know, there was so much further even he had to go. So rest in peace to him. Um, speaking upon the lyrics of this, you know, um, I'm not trying to be one that's in my feelings myself, but I feel like this is a suicide letter in a sense. Like a lot of people were kind of saying dude, it's a fucking like, suicide letter. It was revealing. Letter. Like, yeah. It was very revealing to me, you know, like. And, and as an artist, and, and just uh, not even just as an artist, uh, as an individual, as a person, um, I encourage you, those that have people that you care about, that you love, check up on them. Um, even if they're individuals that you love and you wouldn't think could ever cause harm to themselves, check up on them. Because um, there are people that are crying out for help, and they cry out for help in the smallest of ways. Um, most people don't know how to take it. Um, I can only imagine walking my ass to, I don't know if you'd be sentimental to it or not, but if I was to be like, you know what, Victor, I feel like killing myself. <laughs> my brother, I know him. He's going to be like, don't be stupid. Um, and justly right. And it's out of love and it's out of care, but some people aren't able to recognize that. Um, it's all on the approach. Um, with that being said, yeah, no, this is a fucking suicide note to me, dude. Like, in a lot of it, ways, it, it breaks, it it breaks my heart, dude. It really does. Well, I mean, in a lot of ways, heart, it, like, it at least shows kind of, yeah, it, or how he was mind. feeling, yeah. his state of mind, yeah. and how he was feeling. But even then, that breaks my heart, you know? It really does. Um, whether this was a suicide note or whether this was showing exactly how he was feeling, you know, I'm sorry you felt that way. Um, and I don't know if you knew it, but I wish you knew. If you didn't know, I wish you knew how many lives you impacted. Um, I wish you knew how many lives you changed. I wish you know how many lives you inspired. Um, for God's sakes, there are people that are taking on the challenge of being an artist and trying to put, place themselves in your position beforehand before you even got in the position of fame like you know there are people that are placing yourself in your position because you are who you are um and even for me like speaking from a hip-hop and r&b realm of things with rock and roll like this was when i heard lincoln park i heard rock and i, ha I heard heavy metal and hip-hop and it was the i think it was the first time that i really ever heard heavy metal and hip hop. And that stuff has been around forever. You run DMC, the Beastie Boys. It's not like there hasn't been anybody that was the first to do it, but Linkin Park in itself, they were they were the first to do it in their own style, in their own way. Um and for me it just yeah, no, it grasped it clean. I was a fan, dude. Um probably one of the first um bands, artists as individuals to pull me from just strictly R&B and hip hop knowing of lifestyle into heavy metal. One of the things that he introduced me to. Um, yeah, dude. Um, my heart is heavy right now just because of what I heard, you know. It's, it sucks, dude. I, I, to be in that mindset, nobody knows what he was going through in life. Um, you could imagine, you could think all you want, but you genuinely don't know. Um, dude, this shit's wild. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. crazy. I mean, you know, lyrically to me, you know, 
I, you know, at least the way that I interpret it, I feel like I understand where he's coming. I feel where he's coming from because I get where he's coming from because it's you know a matter of you know if you're really paying attention to everything that's going around and uh, you know everything that's happening, all, all the malevolence that uh, you know technology has allowed us to be more aware and uh, up close to. You know, it's kind of like, especially if, you know, I feel like it's different when you have a family because that right there is something that not only to live for, but you have a responsibility to. He had that though. And that's what I'm saying. So that's a little different, yeah. Yeah. but a, a little different. I mean, yeah. and, and if you don't have have that perception, you know, right? well, then you don't have that perception. But the point being, it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of darkness and it's really easy, especially if you mm. don't have something else really pushing you right. to... Uh, ignore it or rise above it or what have you uh to be like you know let me stare at the sun so i can't fucking see this shit anymore. right you right, get right. so fucking inundated right. with it and overwhelmed right. by it and right. especially if you feel like there's nothing that you can do you know to help it and i mean even then it was just kind of like the the pre-chorus heavy is a hand that points the finger and mm -hmm. heavy is a heart that filled that's filled with anger you know um even then that's a set of conviction in itself you know you can't judge me. Yeah. Um, you're probably no better than me as an individual. You know, for me, like, you know, it just, this is a very conflictive song. And even then, speaking on the, the, he did have a family. He did have kids, you know. Check up on your people. The people that you care about. Because depression is real. Depression exists. And um, a lot of people aren't able to recover from it. A lot of people do take that that over the top choice that that a lot of people can't comprehend or understand and I'm not faulting this individual. I can't fault this individual. Um I just wish I could know. It's one of them things when you see somebody that's impacted you so much in life like you know if I could save your life just by voicing how much I impact that how much you impacted me, I would. But even then, for him, speaking at his state of mind, and not even just his state of mind, but his state of being, he's had people that have said this to him for years upon yeah, years. Yeah. So what can you say that is exactly. going to change that? You know, you know, exactly. um, uh, and on top of that, you have kids to live for. You know, for me, I place my trying to put myself in this individual's shoes. You know, um, I have four kids, five kids of my own, if you count um, a child that I'm raising. I buy choice. That's not mine. Um, or the individual that I'm with. It's just by choice. Family situations. Um, I have five children that I got to live for. Um, to be in a depressive state of mind, you know, and know that you have something to live for and that's still not be enough. What are you going through? Who is not listening? Who is not taking the time to get it, you know? Well, and again, on uh, you know, based on that and kind of what we were talking about, you know, makes me believe, you know, obvious, you know, in the obvious sense, it doesn't make sense that he would do something like that because no. he, he's had a clear right, yeah, effect on right, people, right. and I'm sure he he got letters and emails and stuff all the time yeah, about yeah, the change yeah. he made. So there was cert. My guess would be obviously all this is speculation, but my guess would be there's obviously some kind of interpersonal, you yeah. know, tight knit issues affecting him. And in this right. track, maybe even represented by the uh, uh, that verse, just talking about a self inflicted slow decay, which should have been and ne what never was, became the end for both of us. So right. He's not just talking about himself here. Right. So it sounds like a relationship. Right. Uh, so who knows if it was an issue he was having with his wife or some right. other comp but it def obviously I feel like whatever <laughs> whatever happened yeah, you know that made him do that decision was definitely something to do with you yeah. know the close family yeah. you know yeah, no. and the, it, whatever at the effects, end of the day yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. at the end of the day <clears throat> check on your people and I agree with that because there are some people that they have a strong grip on other individuals there's you have so many people that are in your life and what I mean by that is, it's like you have your grandpas, your grandmothers, your mothers, your fathers, your friends, your significant others, your children. You have so many people in your life, but there's always somebody out of that group of people that has a stronger hold on you. Um, and and what I mean by stronger hold is just an impact on your life. So how you act and how they think of how you act, it truly weighs down on your shoulders. 
Um, you seek perfection out of that. You know, for me, it's my grandfather. Um, I, I live every day to be as much like him as possible. And shit, I'm far from it. <laughs> uh, but with that being said, you know, um, whenever he tells me that he's proud of me, I take that to heart. When he tells me that he's upset with me, I take that to heart. Um, and I do something about it on both on both ventures. If you're proud of me, how can I make you prouder? Um, I want you to be beyond proud. I want you to be beyond proud. And if you're upset with me, that's the last thing I want for you to feel. That's the last thing I want you to expect from me is nothing but fall third disappointment. I want you to always be proud. So, and, and even then in life, you know, we're only human. So there's only so far that we can go. We're, we're, we're only capable of so much. And everybody learns differently, et cetera, et cetera. We could go, et cetera, et cetera, not et cetera. <laughs> <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. We could go on with this forever with it. Um, at the end of the day, again, for me, like, this is a very emotional moment. It's a very emotional track. Um, I just listened to a goddamn man's death note, in my personal opinion, you know? And I feel like that's really fucked up, dude, because it's just like, goddamn, dude, you... And I've dealt with it in my lifetime, you know? I know somebody that's really, that that was close to me. They took their life. And, and even then, you know, I, I said, never stop checking on your people. Don't ever stop checking on your people. Um, please take it from me. Please keep this on camera. Hey, take that off camera, but please keep this on camera. Um, <laughs> even if you don't think that the individual is hearing you, they might be hearing you. Um, I recall recent in 2018, early 2018, losing an individual um, in my life that was really, really cool. Really, really down to earth individual, um, wild, crazy, um, had no filter, <laughs> had no filter whatsoever. But at the end of the day, you know, um, he was a life of the party. Um, he didn't make the best choices in life. Um, but he tried to the best of his abilities. And any time that he was down and out, I always tried to uplift him. I always tried to talk him up. I always tried to bring him out of whatever negativity he was in. Um, I had the mindset of never giving up to the point where I seen him at his lowest of his low. And when I saw him at his lowest, at, when I saw him at his lowest point, it was just like, you know, I thought to myself too, even. And I feel selfish for that now. Um, I've told you anything and everything that I can tell you that's going to bring justice to your life and, and the places of your life where you're finding turmoil and nothing but conviction and being damned and you haven't taken any of my advice to grow yourself as an individual, you know, um, we're not in people's shoes, we're not in people's heads, everybody thinks differently, everybody reacts differently, I'm not saying house the person, feed the person, but if you have a way to speak to the person, continue to uplift. Because my fault was I didn't uplift. I stopped uplifting. And whenever I stopped uplifting, I got that phone call. And it was really, it was just a heavy, it was a heavy feeling on my heart. It's still a heavy feeling on my heart. Um, suicide, I've never really, up until 2018 experienced personally and myself so experiencing that knowing an individual that you're close with that took his life because he felt like he was meaningless you know um if i had a chance to speak to that person today um being alive i tell him you have a great deal of meaning to me um and you do matter to me um you bring happiness to my heart. You might stir up a lot of shit and you might create a lot of chaos out, but at the end of the day, you're still a beautiful person. You know, we're all people, we're all individuals and we all need to be told positive things. We all need to not be hated upon so much. You know, at the end of the day, you can have this huge 
persona upon yourself. Oh, I'm he man or I'm he woman and I'm strong and can't nobody get to me and fuck this and fuck that. And it's all persona. You know, at, at some point it breaks down to you're a human. You need some form of encouragement in your lifestyle in order to push forward. You have to have meaning in your life in order to push forward. Once that meaning is gone, once that definition of meaning is gone, once there's nothing left to live for, that's it for you. Um, whether it be your choice or whether it not be your choice, that's it for you. Uh, and I've worked as in, in a field where it became a sense of, I'll almost say it was your choice, but it was your choice in a beautiful way. And what I mean by that is I was a CNA for five, almost six years of my life, and I've truly been able to take care of people and take care of people that just gave up on themselves too early and take care of people that genuinely before they die, they knew I've done everything I had to do. This is what I lived up to and I'm okay with going now. Being at peace is the most important thing in death that I feel any individual being on this earth should have with themselves. So to take yourself out, you're not at peace. I feel like a great deal of people that are in that mindset, they feel like they're nothing to the world. And if they're nothing to the world, what do you have to offer? Check on your people. This song was as talented, it speaks to his talent. The lyric ability, I heard it loud and clear. Um, the production was cool, but at the end of the day, it's just, yeah, it's... It's fuck, dude. It's fuck, man. Yeah, man. It, uh, Sorry, y'all. I'm bummed, <laughs> dude. I'm bummed. That's it's fucked. Uh, on the lighter side of things, you know, it was uh, interesting to see. It definitely had uh, Mark Morton's signature guitar sound. Like I heard Lamb of God yeah. when I was listening to yeah, the fucking yeah. guitar. The and then uh, I'd say during the verses, if I'm being honest, like. Chester's voice really didn't fit. Like his voice was a little too light with those heavy ass guitars. But then when it broke through to the pre-chorus and chorus, yeah, dude, it, it fits so nicely, man. For Chester, it yeah. was, for Chester with me, like, and Chester's one of them artists, and that doesn't take away from his ability. You know, whenever I speak on rock, like, I, this dude has played me tool, <laughs> and it's unpredictable. For Chester, he's predictable but in a good way um when he's ready to scream he's ready to scream and you know he's ready to scream and i was waiting <laughs> for it i knew it was coming and it came um when he's ready to belt he's ready to belt and when he he's ready for it you know it's gonna come so his predictability is amazing um, his talent was amazing. His talent is amazing. Fuck that. I'm not going to say was because regardless of his death, he's still alive in many people's hearts. Chester, I love you for the, the fans that are around you that continue to embrace you as an artist. We love you. Um, thank you for my childhood memories. Um, fucking butterfly, sugar, baby. Come, my lady. Come, come, my lady. Orange County, the movie, fucking Transformers, just being in the car on my way to World of Fun or fucking to Rockfest with my brother head banging to your music. Um, dude, you've given me so many great music, so many amazing memories, dude. You've just given me so many amazing memories. Rest, rest in peace. You deserve that much. Um, for whatever troubles life brought you that dwindle down to that final action may you rest in peace i pray that you found peace i hope that you found peace um you deserve that much sorry guys i apologize this is it's fucked up dude my name is ryan i'm victor thank you for joining us we're out 